So a good candidate for uh, hip replacement surgery um, is generally someone who obviously has hip pain, um, who we've confirmed has got arthritis, and who has been through conservative treatments, including physiotherapy, changing their activity levels, taking lots of pain relief. And if they get to the stage where those things are not enough to maintain their quality of life, then we can move on to more invasive surgery, like hip replacement surgery. So with a well anesthetized patient who doesn't feel anything, we place uh, patients on their side normally, um, and we uh, remove the arthritic, worn, damaged uh, acetabulum and, and socket and the worn uh, side of the femur, and we replace it with new metal implants. And in between, we have a, a plastic liner that acts as a new joint. And then we give everything a really thorough wash, make sure it's nice and stable, and that will serve uh, the patient really well. Um, and then we close everything back up again and uh, go through to recovery. We use a combination of anesthesia and our preferred treatment is usually with a spinal anesthetic, uh, which involves an injection into the uh, lower back, uh, a bit like uh, an epidural for in pregnancy. And the real benefit of this treatment is that it means that the whole of the lower legs uh, and the pelvis can be numb, allow us to do the operation, but at the same time, the patient can choose to stay awake so that they're breathing for themselves. And even if they choose to be sedated, they can still be awake and breathing. Uh, they can still be uh, sleeping naturally and um, uh, able to maintain their own breathing and their own airway. And it means the huge advantage of it is that in recovery, you've got this wonderful pain relief that is, a, that is still working even after the operation, even into the following day to, uh, sometimes. And no nausea or sickness, which can often happen with general anesthetics. Uh, and is a really predictable and reliable way of, of doing the surgery. And these days, while we can do surgery lots of different ways, that's the mainstay of how we uh, perform uh, hip and knee surgery. So recovery is excellent after hip and knee surgery. Uh, patients are able to walk straight away, assuming that the uh, block and the spinal anesthetic that they've had uh, has worn off enough that they're nice and stable on their feet. They can bear weight straight away. Uh, I usually like my patients to be walking around the bed on the same day as the surgery uh, and to be more independent uh, after they've seen the physios the day after. Most patients stay in for 24 to 48 hours and um, at the six week check when we see them again, most patients have discarded their crutches. Uh, some patients will still use one crutch when they're out and about uh, for a bit of extra security and protection but generally uh, mobility at the six week mark is uh, very good. There will be some occasional swelling that can persist for a few months after the surgery. And I would say for patients to completely forget that they've had a knee or a hip replacement can take something in the order of six to nine months. The whole point of hip replacement surgery is to give people their quality of life back. And some people's quality of life will involve running a marathon and some people will be involved running away from a marathon. But irrespectively, they should have the choice to decide how they want to use their uh, joints. So from my point of view, we have restored a uh, new bearing, uh, which is effectively a uh, man-made uh, bearing that allows you to use the hip uh, as you see fit with the things that give you pleasure and that give you quality of life. So from my point of view, um, there is no restriction um, once we're after the, over the initial period. Um, and um, I would not expect there to be significant problems, but I would want to know what your, your plans and expectations are so that I can modify my surgery to help um, and to uh, ensure that you're able to get back to as active a lifestyle as possible.